Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how we can use context API or use context hook to actually create a card system in React. So what I have got for you today is I've created a simple books library where we can select the books with different price. So let me just show you. I'll just make it large. And as you can see here, I've put one, two, three, four, five, six books that I have just randomly created myself. I've got these pictures from Amazon. These are actual books and all the information you see there is actually related to these books. But the price, yeah, the price is also from the Amazon. So what we can do with this uh, little app is we can actually click on any of these book to add to cart. As soon as I click on add to cart, it will see a bouncy effect here and you will see that book getting added to our cart. So if I click add to cart, that's one added. Now we can go and have a look at it. So here's our book, which is $17.23. And if you want to increment the quantity, we can. So the price will also go up, obviously. Then we have three and we can decrease it. And last we can remove a book. So this is what we can do. Let's try to add all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So as you can see, I have six books. And if I go into my cart, one, two, three, four, five, six, six books, which is all together 81.13. And if I add this book again, this won't change to seven. It will just bounce and stay six because what is happening is changing this quantity of this book inside the cart. So you can see it's already two now. If I remove it, it's one. And if I add it again, you can see it will be two again. And we can also increment any of these books and your total also increase. So all of these books are here. We can remove all these books from the cart. We can remove everything. And now we see your cart is empty. There's nothing. So we are going to create this tutorial and just follow the instruction and make sure to hit that subscribe button for the upcoming tutorials and thank you so much for all the new subscribers for subscribing the channel and motivating me to create another videos and as usual we are gonna start from scratch creating the react app via wait so if you know this part pause this video and do your thing so i'm gonna go create npm create wait at latest and yes, I only had to install wheat inside my project again. So you can name this project whatever you want. I will name it TX, TS Expert Library. And we're going to go down to React and then obviously TypeScript. And then we cd into our directory. So TS export library. And inside this, now we have to install all the dependencies. So we are going to run npm install. All right, guys, our app has been installed. Now let's just open it on the side of our VS code. So this doesn't have it open. So we can just do code space dash and press enter. This opens in another window. We can definitely close this VS code window. And here we are. First thing first, we are again going to clean up the defaults, which is not much in this case. So I'm going to go to the source folder, going to delete asset folder. We are going to delete app.css index.css and remove these imports from here let's also remove this logo and we're gonna remove everything from our app except the fragment and we can't transfer I said everything so this is done in our main.tsx. We don't need the index.css file. Now let's try to run this. Pentium run dev and type O and press enter. So here is our blank page. And like always, check the console is all clear. So we want to create this. 
inside this blank page. So I've done it inside the Code Sandbox. If you don't know what Code Sandbox is, it's an online ID just like Visual Studio Core where you don't have to install the React app all the time and dependencies. It comes with pre-installed dependencies. So I'm going to close this one for now and keep this open for a reference. And this is where we're going to create our card system. Now that our app is blank, what we're going to do next is come back to the VS Code. And inside this, we are going to create inside our source directory, we are going to create a new file named data.ts. What this file will be doing? This file will hold all the data for our books. So all the information you are seeing here, these books, the name of the book, the pages, the year, the price, and the image it will be stored inside this data.ts file. And where is it going to come from? If you click on the link uh, in the description, you will be redirected to a Google Drive folder, which is this one. Once you are here, I want you to click on the data.ts. Double click this, it will open in another window. All, all I want you to do is Control A or Command A and copy this. Once you copy this, just come to this file and paste it. So here we have the data we are exporting. const data id1, the perfect child is our book number one which is this one and all the information for the book the author, the price, pages and the link which I am getting from and Amazon. So this is the data here. Now what we want to do next is once we have the data we are going to create our front end. So we are going to create this whole page here with this navbar. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to do that, we're going to create another folder inside of a source folder. And I'm going to name this components. And inside components, we are going to create a new file named it products dot, sorry, product.tsx. And I'm going to use my snippets so which is a VS Code extension R-A-F-C-E React Arrow Function Component Import Export and inside this so we have this first component our first custom component which is going to be responsible to create the uh, front end for our books so right so once we have that inside this I'm going to create I'm going to name this div Actually, I will change this into fragments and I will create another div inside this and I will name it navbar. I will create that div and give it a class name of navbar. So navbar. And inside this, I'm going to create another div with the class name of logo. So we have one parent div and one child div. So this child div will have a React icon and an H1 inside, which is this one. So we are creating this one right now. So let's go ahead and split the terminal, install the React icons before we can use them. So npm install React icons. Let's check in package.json. Always check the dependency you're installing inside your package.json file so we have core react uh, icons 5.0.1 so we can bring it down this is installed so here we are gonna import our first react icon which will be far react since we got the react icons there as you can see these are react icons so import far react icons from far so we don't need that and now I can simply call this icon here and remember how you call the icons with the self closing tag so we have that and we're gonna check it as we do it so right now there won't be anything shown up here because we haven't rendered our product.css component inside our main component so I'm gonna call this here product and import it up here, import products. So we can see the React icon here. So that's working, our app is working fine. 
now let's come back to the product once we have the icon now we can create the h1 tag for this so after that h1 which will be the name of our application ts expert and i'm gonna call this icon one more time so we should have like this and right now it's looking like this because we haven't provided any css so be patient first thing first we'll create a structure of this so this div is done now we're gonna come down and create an h2 so this h2 is for this part here so inside this h2 what I'm gonna do we're gonna import another react icon so import this will be pi shopping shopping cart simple fill so this is the one we are importing and I'm just gonna copy it from there since the name is too big and I will call this right here with self closing tag check it at the same time we got the card icon yes so once we have that I wanna use span with a plus name of oh, actually we will do this later so I'm just gonna leave the span here because this is going to be dynamic this class will change dynamically as this one so let's just create the UI first then we will do the next one so H2 as that one and now this is for our navbar let's create another div here and name this main so what is main for this for this part all these books are going to be inside the main part so I'm gonna create uh, let's import the data so this data of the books let's import it inside product so we can render it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import data from <coughs> excuse me from data so now I've imported the data and we are just simply gonna map this in our app so if you come down here so we are gonna go data dot map book And inside this, I'm going to give it a div with a source, not source, sorry, div with a key which will come from book.id, so which is a unique key for each one of the books, so id1, id2. And once we have that, let's give it a class name of book and let's close this div so once we have closed the div now we're gonna render the image of that book so image let's close this source so it's gonna be book dot image you cast it right and we're gonna give it an out of book my pet book dot m i uh, book dot name so in case the image doesn't render it will just render the name of that book so if we come back here you can see that we are already rendering the images of the books and we have some warning but i'm pretty sure they will go away once we refresh so we have no issues let's see how it looks like we have got all the books here since there's no css so they are all over the place but we'll fix that in a minute so we have rendered the books now what else we need to render we need to render book information so the perfect child name of the book and the author and other stuff so 
after this div, I'm actually going to create another div. I'll probably do this inside. After the image, I will create another div and name it, give it a class name of book info. And inside the book info, first one will be S2. Which, since we're already mapping, so all we have to do is book dot name. First thing first, book dot name. And a P tag for by author. So this is going to be book dot author. And then we can have another P tag for pages. So book dot pages year and price. So year book dot year price book dot price. So we have got that sorted. Now we're gonna need a button. So let's see where the button is. So the button is inside the same class. So as you can see, we have got the name here, price here, year, and the pages for each book right beneath it. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to create a button here. So btn, and I'm going to name this add to cart. So right now this button does nothing. There's no functionality. So we, all we have is some icons in the nav bar this book and the information about the book. So all that we have here and then we got a div a div which is a parent div of the button and then there yeah so everything is there. Now I want you to do one more thing create a new file inside component name this product products.css once you have done that this is an empty file come back to the Google Drive link and in the same folder you will find another file product.css so if you can just control A or command A copy this whole file paste inside your CSS so this is this is CSS file with all the notes on it so you can see which CSS style is for this this can get added at the end because I added the keyframes at the end. So forget about that. Now come back to your products and import the CSS file in here. So import product.css. And if we come back there, this is our actual app. And this is our front end. Already looking like same as this one, right? So so this is all on to the left hand side. This should be center. So text align. Text align. Or maybe book. Let's try to give it a text align center. So everything is in the center here just like this one and I'll probably use the font there but I didn't use it in this one so we're just gonna ignore that and everything is perfectly aligned in center here all the books are shown here now we need to create a cart so we're gonna create a cart for so we can click on this and a cart that pop-ups here like this so let's go ahead and create our cart so back in our VS code inside components folder we are going to create a new file and name this cart.tsx and I'm going to create a component here and inside this we are going to import an icon from react icon which will be the close icon so which is this icon here So this icon is called AI fill close circle and in our TSX or GSX actually 
We're gonna come here and give this tip a class name or call it. So make sure your class name spelling is as it is mine. That's when your CSS file that you will copy from the OneDrive will work. Otherwise, if you have different names, then you have to change the names inside your CSS files accordingly. So inside that, we have created this div and we're going to create another div and I'm going to name it close icon. Inside this, I'm going to call that react icon. And now I'm going to create another div with the class name of cart items. And give it a heading with h2 your cart and a p tag this is your cart is empty so this will actually change conditionally when mm. the state change and the cart is equal to zero so this will display otherwise your cart will be displayed it's just like this one so you can see your cart your cart is empty once we have anything inside this that your cart is empty will go away so let's go back to the VS code and we already have this here so I'm just gonna create the cart for now let's just give it a div here and another div with the class name of book selected So this is what for this is for the selected book inside your cart so I'm creating the style for this this side here which will come from the context so book selected and another class inside this image area and inside this we will pass the image later on and here we will pass the name of the book book name so once that's done this is the book selected but we're gonna stay inside the book selected class and we're now gonna create our buttons so which buttons again we are gonna create these buttons and increment and decrement and remove buttons so let's go up oh, let me just close the terminal and we can name this buttons first button will be increase decrease button which will be a plus and then inside the buttons we're gonna have the quantity so I'm just gonna say one for now and another button with a minus sign so that should be so we have just done this this and this so this these three things these three buttons we have just declared up here but remember this is our published version this is not here so we haven't entered the cart by clicking this so we can come back to the VS code and once the button is done this step with the increase decrease we can come out of this step and now we are gonna create another step below this so I'm gonna check it with this this here below this we're gonna create another div class with remove and give it a button remove so we have that we have that and lastly we need uh, a span with total price So this one is for this one this one comes later so we're gonna declare that afterwards so once we have this we can finally come out of the cart items div 
And here we can create another div. Total price. And I'm gonna give it a H2 with the class name of total which will say total and a p tag inside this some dollars here I'll just name this so we have got everything now I'm gonna render this card and see if we can actually see how a card does look like so I'm gonna call this here just for testing So here is our card information. Now it looks like this because we haven't provided it any CSS. So what I want you to do is come back to that Google Drive link and come to this folder. Now open card CSS. Let me close this. We already used them. Copy this, close it, and back to the VS Code. Create another file here named this card.css and we just paste it here but we still have to call it inside of a cart.tsx so import cart.css now you can see this is how our cart is looks like right now comparing to this one because we don't have an image we just have a book name here and we have increment decrement remove and everything like this once we have these property inside it will just look like that so how are we going to do that we're going to do that with the help of context api because we cannot simply pass these items to this so all i'm doing is i'm just clicking on add to card on this book and every information about this book get also passed to the card so not every information in this case we are only passing it an id the name an image and a price so these are the three things we are passing it over here we have got a few things which is image name author name pages year and everything but inside of a card we are only passing it three things which is the name image and the price of the book so how are we gonna do that we are gonna do that by creating uh, a card context so let's see how we can do that alright guys before we start creating the card context I just noticed one error here so as you can see here our remove button is not in red color as it is over here and we don't see any style for the image side so I'm guessing there's a class name spelled wrong from my side and I've just noted that it has to be let me just open the card.css on the side so as we look at this card items so it has to be cited inside book selected so book selected book selected book selected uh, here it is uh, okay so my bad guys uh, I have a typo in my CSS so if your class style is not applying to book selected because you are spelling selected correctly inside the GSX I would just like you to copy the class name from that side and just paste it here because we only need it once and it's already repeated here since you are copy pasting this style what I'm just gonna do I, I would suggest you to do is copy this book selected with the wrong spelling and I will just put it here and now we can have a look at it there it is so that that's how it should be looking just like that so that's the error that I just encountered so sorry about that if you can just fix that quickly and if you're not able to find it let me know in the comments so this is how it should look like now we have nothing here we are waiting for an image to come here a book name and price an extra price these are just hard-coded values so let's go ahead and create the card context alright now we can close the CSS file and we can create another file 
inside components I will name this card context dot tsx remember this will be a tsx file not ts file and inside this I'm gonna import context uh, create context from react okay and we gonna import use reducer and use context hook and dispatch so these are the four things we are gonna rem uh, import from react and let's create an interface to define the structure of a book and cart item so we are gonna provide the types for our books uh, details so first book interface so we are uh, now providing the types based on our data in the data.ks file based on these files so we have an ID which is a number a name as a string author is a string and price is a number page is a number years and numbers and then we have image as a string so we're gonna keep that in mind and we are gonna create an interface here which will be export interface book and we'll give ID a number name as string author as string pages number price is number what's next we have what else do we have price pages here so we go pages price and here as number and lastly we have got images which will be image as number and here I want to add one more thing count as number to count how many times we are adding the book in the cart so number our interface is there uh, now let's create a a create item which will ex the extends the book interface by adding a quantity property so we are gonna add another interface cart item extends now this will extend this books interface so this book interface sorry not books and inside this we are gonna pass quantity as number so once that done now let's create another interface to define the structure of the overall card state which includes an array of card items so interface card state card card item that we just declared up here inside this now we have that let's create a type which defines the possible action that can be dispatched to update the cart state action include uh, adding to the cart removing from the cart increasing the quantity and decreasing the quantity so if you don't know what I mean we are talking about these action increment and decreasing remove so let's go ahead and do that so we're gonna create a type cart action so we are gonna do cart action equal to or type add sorry my bad type semicolon add to cart and payload book or so we're just gonna copy this down one two three four times as we are four actions and this type will be 
remove from cut so remove from cut payload number this one will be increase quantity so increase quantity then this will be a number lastly we are gonna decrease quantity and this will be a number as well now we will create a react context using create context which we imported from the react over here and uh, the context will hold an object with the cart state and a dispatch function for handling actions the initial, uh, initial value uh, will be set to undefined so we're gonna do const cart context is equal to sorry const cart context context is equal to create context inside this we are gonna pass a state it will be cut state dispatch now we're gonna dispatch and inside this we're gonna pass cut action or it's gonna be undefined and we'll pass it undefined so undefined so now once we're done with that one uh, we can create a function to define a, ra a reducer that takes the current state and an action then returns a new state based on the action type I know this is really really complicated but you have to keep on practicing this this took me so long to learn this is like the most complex part I would say of, of react once you have learned this then it becomes so easy for you to creating e-commerce websites in react because you have to use card functionality in every e-commerce so now we can do const card reducer state card state and set an action which will be card action so this action should be yeah then we can semicolon card state the narrow function so we got the okay my bad sorry it's a equal sign here so cart reducer and then I equal sign not a minus sign obviously the, so we have what have done here state is not there it's cart state so I may have some input up there nothing so once we done with that one switch now we need the action type action dot type and in the case of add to cart what we want to do add to cart first thing we gonna want to do is to check if the item uh, to be added already exists in the cart so we will use find method to look for an item in the cart array with the same ID as the item being added so you don't want to add an already existing item into the cart you just want to increase the quantity of it as I show you at the beginning of the application so what we're gonna do we're gonna check if the item is already existing so we're gonna do const existing cart item state dot cart dot find method 
and inside this we are gonna search for the item item dot id equal to action dot playload play actually payload what I'm doing so payload dot id So we have got cost and we have cut that. Now we can put a semicolon here. And now if the item is already in the cart and the condition is true, then we want to increase that existing item by one, just like I show you in this example. So let's say this item is now already in the cart. What, what we want to do is when I press the add to cart again, I don't want to add a duplicate of this, all I want to do is increment the quantity. As you can see, it's now two, and if I click it again, it's three. So now we want to do that. So what do we want to do? If the item is already in the cart and the condition is true, then we want to increase that ex item, uh, existing item by one. So we can use an if statement here. If existing item, then return state. Uh, the state, the spread is to create a shallow copy of the current state. So state is done now. Sorry, state. Then we use cart. State dot cart. Dot map. And now we can map these items. Uh, so let's check if the current item's ID matches the ID of the item being added to uh, and then incremented by one. So we're going to do item.id equal to action.payload.id and then we use the spread operator on item quantity Quantity. Item. Dot. Quantity. So this is why we added this extra interface here for quantity. So we get the quantity, and then we want to increment it by one, so we can plus one. Else. Item. So we have got that now. What we want to do is, if the item does not exist in the cart, then we want to return, and now we will spread the state cart. State dot cart and then we can again spread the action dot payload quantity one. So that's done. All right, now let's move on to the next case, which will be removed from cart, which will be a shorter version of that, not as long as the first one. So what we have to do is return. state and cart state dot cart dot filter item then item dot id not equal to action dot payload so that's it for the remove from the card case and in the next case
we are gonna do increase quantity and let's return this state uh, let's update the cart array using the map method to create a new array by uh, iterating over the each item in the current cart so what we can do here is cart state dot cart dot map so we're going to use the map here and I'm going to use item as it is and what are we going to check uh, if the ID of the items matches the current action uh, payload dot action then we wanted to create a new object with the exi uh, existing properties of the item and increment the quantity property by one so we want to increment here what we want to do is item dot id equal to action dot payload and we get all the items and we get the quantity so this is a custom declare variable you can name it whatever you want it's not that you have to name it quantity I'm just naming it quantity to be relevant so I know that I'm using quantity here plus one and those item so that's done we have our third case done now let's do the last case which is decrease quantity not last ah yeah this is the last case so case decrease quantity and now let's return return this spread creator on the state so it's pretty much the same as the first one you just gotta know how to do the first one and then you just doing the same thing in every case cart or map item item dot id equal to action dot payload item quantity net dot max and item dot quantity minus one and comma one and again item so this is your last case where we are decreasing the quantity we are increasing the quantity here removing the cart pretty simple and the first one is a little bit complicated today. we have to actually add to cart and check for the existing item more in the cart already so that with that done we can use the default return state so that's all done we are now I've noticed that we have an issue with our first case so what is happening in the first case let's check it out and I'm gonna hover over it it's saying unexpected lexical declaration in case block so unexpected lexical warnings they typically indicate issues with how variables are declared or used within a block of code so in our case we have got const existing cart item which is perfectly fine so I don't think that should be an issue however if we are using an older version of TypeScript or strict linting rule it might cause warning so that is what happening in our case so I'm just gonna block it here what I'm gonna do I'm gonna disable the linting warning here so this will go away so this is just a temporary fix but in order to fix this we have to go into TypeScript config file and change the linter setting but we're not going to do that for now so that's done now our reducer function is done and now what we can do is next one
Now we need to create a React functional component that uses the use reducer hook that we just created to manage the card state and it will provide the state and dispatch function to its children via the card context dot provider. So what I what do I mean by that? We can do const card provider and this card provider wraps up our entire app so we're gonna wrap our app to TSX uh, in the card provider you will see how what I mean right now so card provider react dot functional component kicks children type of react and react node And obviously it's an error function. We can pass the children as a prop. Children. Then we can do const state dispatch. use reducer hook we'll take card reducer and card array so what we have warning here type of children in the word is not assigned to f children obviously because we haven't completed this so I'm gonna return now return and now it will provide the state and dispatch function to its children via the card per, uh, card context dot provider. So we gonna do card context dot provider. Give it a value state and dispatch. this will take children so now we have cost card provider a react functional component and we have got the props as children react or react node and I don't know why this still screaming it's going to move your component to a separate file okay because we have an example for now so uh, let's create a custom hook and use cart which will allow components to easily access the cart context using the use context hook so now we're gonna create our custom hook custom hook you use cart const context use context and we pass it the card context now we're going to check if there's no context then we want to throw a new error which will say use card this has to be a capital E use card must be used within card provider so what? Uh, so what do I mean by that? If this application is not wrapped with you uh, card provider like this, then it will throw that warning. We will get that error, and we will know why we are getting that error. So once that done, we can now return context. 
Now let's export the card provider and our custom hook. Use card to use it in our application. So export. This is all we are using from this whole app. We're gonna use card provider and use card. These are the two things that we're gonna use from this whole file. And now see the warning is gone away because we have exported it. So this is it. We have finally created our context API, the card context for our card system, which will be responsible for doing all these you seeing inside the card. So adding to the card, increment, decrease, remove, everything is gonna happen because of this one file. This is all we have to do. So now let's go ahead and implement this into our actual app. So what we're gonna do is if we go to the app.tsx so app.tsx we come to app.tsx and I'm gonna import card provider here and I'm gonna wrap this app inside card provider and we're gonna remove the card from here since we're gonna access the card from the navbar not over this already by default so now we have done that we have got the styles I think we needed some basic styles for that so I will do and div class here no mind so that's done and we can remove this extra import now we can do is we can go to the products.tsx file and implement our logic over there so I'm gonna close all of these files so we are in product.tsx and here what are we gonna do we are gonna import our book which is the types for our book what we are importing here we are importing this interface the types so book and what else do I want from that file I want the custom book from that file so use card from card context So we have both of them and let's go also import our cart over here. So cart component, we are now importing the cart component over here. Why? Because we want to access the cart component uh, when we click on the cart icon inside the product, so over the product. So we have imported that here. Now what we can do, let's access the context here. So we're gonna do const, that's how you access the con context in another component, we call state and dispatch my bad, it's not the uh, use state, it's like this state and dispatch from use cut And now let's also declare a use state for, for our card to be updated. So const card updated set card updated. From React up oh, like that. Yeah, dot use state. So since we don't have any import from yet, what we can do is we can import import use state from React. So use state here with the default value of false. 
because by default the card is not updated unless we do const another use state variable so we're gonna create this for open the card so open card fact open card the use state by default it's also false because we're gonna open the card when we click on it so we wanna do this and close it from here so we hit that now if we come down now we're gonna do two things so we're gonna add a card to button so we're gonna give up a button the functionality to add the card and first let's open the card handler so first thing first I'm gonna do is const open card handler so we are creating a function which will handle the card opening and all we want to do is set card set open card to true here and const close card handler do the easiest thing first so we're going to set open card to false here so that's done now let's move to the um, JSX again so where we need to open this the, we need to do this so first thing first we're going to render the card so what I'm going to do is uh, as we do that let's just create a function where we add to the card so as we're going from the top I'm going to create another function here const add to card so this function will be responsible for adding item to the card so what we want is a parameter and we're going to provide it the type of book which we are actually importing from here uh, not here these types so we are telling that the function of the parameter of the function that you should be able to uh, fetch these kind of you should be able to add the items in the, the card with these types and what we can do we can use the dispatch so the type would be add to cart obviously because we are adding to the cart and then we can do the comma payload spread the parameters book count one So that function is adding the cards, adding the book to the card. So let me just write the comments here. Adding books to the card. This one is opening the card. And this one is closing the card so these are the three functions we have got and now we wanna uh, do the total items in the card so let's go ahead so total items so what is this for we are gonna add all the added oh we're gonna add up all the price of the books that we have added into the card so total items which is the total of this this so we're doing this one total items const total card count state dot card dot reduce Total book, and we can use cost count to add type of 
book dot count is equal to number so we check in the type of it if it's equal to number then book dot count else it's zero and const new total is equal to total plus count to add and let's return new total number so what happening here total print plus cannot be apply to types cart item and number why not type cart items it extend book so why it cannot add it it's it is here Why didn't I provide the type already? So why is it saying that that you cannot do that? Total cart items. Cart items is quantities number. So I'm getting an error here after returning. Come okay, because we have to pass a zero after this. So that's done. Now let's import use effect from React. So use effect use effect. So we're going to use it to set cart update, set cart update to true. And the camera put const timeout ID to set <laughs> timeout. So this is for the bouncing effect. So we're going to adjust the bouncing time, which is this one. As you can see this one, so we're going to use side effect, I use effect to hand, handle side effects, set timeout, and we can do set card, update it to false, otherwise it will just keep bouncing, and then just pass 500, so 5 millisecond as the dependencies and then we're going to return clear timeout timeout and this is fact hook will take state and 
state dot cart as it dependency so once we have that now let's come to our gsx and fix the cart where we have to do this so we are on the s2 where we gonna s2 is our this one so we're gonna make it clickable so when we click on it we can open the cart so h2 gonna take an on click and we're gonna pass it opening cart handler so open cart handle get passed to this h2 and now inside this span we are gonna give it a class name which will change dynamically so we're gonna name cart updated else bounce so don't worry about this this bounce class is coming from the CSS file of the cart.css I mean the product.css so it's this bounce class here so bounce else just empty Okay, so this stays here. So now, anti. And what goes inside this is the total count. Total card count, which we just did it over here. So once that done, and we are already rendering that so map dot book is there we got the data here now what we can do all right after this step we can get open cart and pass it the cart component itself which will take uh, prop as cart tools cart and we will pass it the tools cart handler so now what we have done here is wait let's just close it so this is the card component now which is this one and let me just open it onto the side so we have got this card component which now takes a pro because I'm passing with the product so this is the product dot tsx this just give me a second there's a typo yeah so now I've rendered the open uh, card component right underneath the product so which I'm gonna conditionally open so what I'm doing is I'm passing this card component a trolls card prop so inside the card what you have to do is you have to take that prop so what we're gonna do we're gonna declare an interface first for this prop and I'm gonna name it card props tools card and what type of what is the type of this prop is it's a void function which returns nothing and then we can simply pass it and make this a react dot functional component and pass that cut props here and take the tools cut as prop so now we have taken the close cut as the prop and what we can do is if we go to that AI fill this one this icon react icon we can give it an on click event and pass it that same function close cut so that's passed to that one but we still have some issues here but let's see if we have that function working so as you can see this is working already 
just like this one. So I remove the items. So uh, our cart is now showing zero by default, and I'm I'm not adding anything to the cart yet. But as you can see, uh, I can close it. I can open action. So with that done, add to cart. So let's see what we're gonna do to add to cart. So if I go back to the product dot tsx and close this so we are now missing this and we're going to pass this to the add to cart button where is our add to cart so this is our add to cart button let's give it our own click event and pass this our add to cart and inside this deposit the book count okay so we have something wrong in here in this function parameter what is saying is types of property image are incompatible type string is not assignable to a type number and here we are looking at the parameters id is a number name is a string author is a string price is a number ah image is a string so let's check our types interface that we have declared in cart context and so types for them are all good all good Im ah okay here we just found another mistake that i made and apologies for that one so if you can please come back to cart context a tsx file in your cart context and i want you to change image to a string because I said image is a string but I just typed it number here I don't know how that happened but yeah that's an typo here again which can cause TypeScript error so this is one TypeScript error we just encountered and we just quickly fixed it so you always read for your errors and now as you can see that warning is goes away if I again undo this and change it to number you can see that this error is still showing here type string is not assignable to a type number because image is a string is it's a link so it's a string so we just change this back to string so make sure your image type is string and all your types uh, for the book should be as you can see on your screen here so with that we have fixed that issue yes the problem is fixed now with all that done let's check if we are still able to add the books to the cart so I'm gonna come back to the Chrome so this is our original version this is our current version that we are creating so the cart is empty here less there shouldn't be any items in the cart by default but because we haven't implemented anything in the cart so I'm just gonna see if I add to cart so the book gets added as you can see two three four but we are not seeing in the cart because we now need to use the provider the cart context inside the cart component as well so let's go ahead and do that so I'm gonna come back to my cart.tsx and over here we have got our interface now we are gonna call our use state our custom hook here as well so before the after this I'm gonna call the const state dispatch from uh, not from sorry just like used it this is our custom hook which is use cart and it's just automatically imported up there so if it doesn't for you you can import import use cart from cart context we don't need this so we have got that here the next thing is we need a function which will be able to remove from the cart so remove the item that we have added inside the cart just like this one so we need a function in order for a remove button to work so we can just remove everything all at once so let's go ahead and do that remove from cart I'm just gonna comment it out for your reference so let's get this sorry we need to name the function const remove 
from cart you can name your function whatever you want but just trying to be more relevant so we're gonna get an id as a parameter give it a type so there's another thing that we are why i'm providing it numbers when i know id is already number because we are working react with typescript so we have to provide the types if you were in javascript you wouldn't have to worry about this you have to worry about that later when your actually uh, app is actually deployed and then you good luck finding the errors so in this this way we can actually find the errors while we are coding as we just did in this one as product.c over here so number we gonna create a function here arrow function and inside this arrow function I'm gonna use the dispatch get the type so what the type we want here if you go back to the card context we are doing cart action here so we want the type remove from cart so we sorry in the cart so we want the type remove from cart and we want payload id so that's it for this function now we will add another function for our um, increment and decrement so we can increase the quantity of the book that we have added so we want a function to increase and a function to decrease so let's go ahead and do that const increase quantity another arrow function this function will also take id as a parameter and the type number an arrow function pretty much same dispatch takes a type type of what what type this would take we have already used add to cart and remove from cart since this is an increase quantity so we're going to use the increase quantity type here and payload id so that's our second function now we need one last function here to decrease the quantity so decrease quantity dispatch type and what do we gonna use here what what is the type here you guessed it right we are gonna use decrease quantity and payload id again so as you can see all these functions are same and i have an error here because obviously i did not declare the parameter here and it's type number so they all all these three functions are pretty much same just taking different type so after the function we now want our cart to have data dynamically so when we click on add to cart anything on the cart this data that you're seeing here this is what we want to see in our cart right right now we don't see that so now we want to render add to cart button whatever you whenever you click add to cart button that data should be displayed inside our cart because right now we only seeing static data that reason why because you can see there's static data here so we want that data to come dynamically in order to do that first thing first we're gonna do is we're gonna render this your cart and your cart is empty conditionally so when our cart is empty we want to display your cart is empty message and when there are items in our cart then we wanna show those items so first thing first with this one I'll write underneath h2 I'm gonna call state so state where I'm getting that I'm getting that from my custom book state dot cart dot length if it's equal to zero that means if it's empty then we want to show your cart is empty message so I'm gonna copy that cut that from there and paste it inside this and now else else what we want to do we want to do we want to open fragments here and I want you to copy this empty div where it ends here everything inside this empty div 
and put it inside these fragments. So with that done, let me just align them. So after formatting the document, what are we going to do now again? After the fragment, we're going to again get the state. We're going to map our data. So state.cart.map item So I hope you all know how to map the data right now by now. So with that, I will again copy this empty div. This is much easier than bringing that curly braces down inside this and format the document. So with that done, what we can do now, we can provide this empty div a key because when you are mapping something inside and React and it asks ask you for a unique key probe, otherwise you will get console warnings. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna provide it a key. The key will be item dot id. So each book has its unique id. So each item in the map will have its own unique key pro. And now all we have to do is change this static data to dynamic. So we can change these hard code values by item dot. So that was book name. So we're gonna change name. And oh, we also have images here. Forgot about the images. So let's get the images first. Item dot image. And inside the art, we will do item dot name of that book. So in case if the image is not available, you can see the name on top of it. The next one, we have this quantity. So quantity, we're going to change that with the count, I think. So let me just see not count we declared quantity somewhere yeah we have quantity as quantity so we can do item dot quantity and so with the remove button we need to give it uh, that function and pass it that id as well so we can what are we going to do now so this remove button will take the function so this function, we're going to provide this function to this remove button on on-click event. On-click event and the arrow function, we pass it to remove from cart and inside the parameter it takes item.id. And for the price, we don't want dynamic price, we want the price of the actual book. So what we can do inside this we can do item dot price multiply item dot quantity and then we'll just give it a two fixed so to get the two decimal point value so two fixed with two decimal point reason why I'm multiplying this because when you have multiple books inside this so the price also changes. So it'll give you the actual price of how many times you have added that item. So with that done, now we need one more thing, which is our total price. So with that done, let's come to the total price. I'm going to keep the total there. And inside the P, we can put a dollar sign. I'll open the curly braces. And let's use state dot cart dot reduce total item and error function so the total plus item dot price so price of each item then multiply the item dot quantity and zero then we will also render this two fix to a two decimal point so with that done our cart is done now we still have an error okay obviously we didn't use increase and decrease quantity so I forgot about that 
So let's come down to the buttons. So this plus button is obviously the quantity increase. So I forgot it to provide an on click event. So let's do that quickly. On click an arrow function, increase quantity. It takes the parameter and obviously it will take item.id. Same for this one. On click event arrow function, decrease quantity and it takes item.id as parameter. So now I can say that we are pretty much done with the cart. We are pretty much done with the products. Now let's hope that it's working. So let's come to Chrome. So this is our deployed version, which is working. And now we want to check our current version. So we so we don't have anything in the cart right now. Before we were seeing some hard code data here. But now your cart is empty, your total is dead. So let's try to add a book. First one. Added a book. And it's added. So let's try to increase the quantity. Perfect. It's increasing. Let's try to decrease the amount of the quantity. So it's decreasing. The price is also going playing along with it. So it's empty. I want to check any other book. I want to actually add all of them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six books. Altogether, they are 81.13. And if you can increase a quantity of each book, the price also goes up. Yep. So that's working perfectly fine. But I've noticed I just missed a dollar sign in front of the book price here. So let's just quickly add that. So where we have the price. Even this price, actually. So we are in the product.tsx right now. I want to add a dollar sign in front of this as well. Because I wasn't seeing any dollar sign. And this one is inside cart. So we need to go into our cart.tsx. Come to the gsx at the bottom where we have the price. That's the quantity. Item price. So with this span, in front of this span, I will add a dollar sign. With that, we are now pretty much done with our cart component. And this is how you actually add items to a card. And you remove item from card. You increase and decrease quantity. So this is all happening in a React components with the help of TypeScript for type safety. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit the subscribe button and I will paste the link in the description for the github for this project if you need any help you can just check that out and all the links will be provided in the description for the css file and the tara file and thank you so much for watching this video guys and uh, once again a big thank yous to all the subscribers who have subscribed to this channel we'll see you in the next video